Right. It's not a show. I don't need to coil that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I do the same thing. I like playing like, with I just so cables. instinctually just like <laughs> thing, I expect this to just pop right out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, what's going on? I'm David Benitez from Extreme Vocal Institute, and this is Stevie from Inferi. How you doing? Doing well. How are you? Good, thank you. Stoked about day one of the tour? Dude, super stoked, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Black Crown is super sick. Warforged is like incredible. Love those dudes as well. So yeah, this going is a out great lineup guys. of a tour. Yeah, thank you. It's it's going to be quite a treat getting to watch them every night. Is this the last U.S. tour you're doing for the year, or do you have anything after this? Uh, we have some stuff uh, going on after this. It hasn't been announced yet, um, so I can't really say too much. But uh, you know, you'll you'll see our name on a few more flyers. So sweet. That's awesome. And the first thing I was going to ask is, I know you guys re-released one of your previous albums recently. How has that been going, just getting that out there, like remixed, remastered, all of that? Oh, it's been spectacular. We actually, uh, we completely re-recorded the Wait. album from the ground up. Okay. Um, yeah, and so uh, we, the first time around, um, it was uh, put out as the band was trying to ramp up, but due to a series of unfortunate events, um, it kind of end ended up crumbling the band, um, and they sort of went on hiatus for a number of years. Uh, so since it didn't originally fit the vision that Malcolm had, uh, he wanted to re-release it for the 10-year anniversary. And uh, So last year, uh, once we were done uh, going on tour with Obscura for Deluvium, we went ahead, we all each went home, um, we tracked our own parts, uh, the drums and the bass are completely reimagined. There's lots of stuff in there that was not in first time around. Uh, as far as vocals and uh, guitar work go, um, for the most part, they're pretty on point. Like all the guitar work is the same as it was the first time around. There are a couple little like backing things that have been added for a little bit of extra ambiance, um, some orchestral bits and pieces sprinkled throughout here and there. Uh, and then for vocals, I tried to pretty much match most of what Josh did uh, as far as where he threw in harmonies and stuff like that. Um, I did get to elaborate on a few parts here and there, which was great. Uh, but overall, it was a wonderful process and we were able to wrap it up like from start to finish. It was like less than a month. Uh, oh, that's not bad at ourselves. all. <laughs> yeah. So we I mean, we each have the ability to record stuff on our own. So we were able to just kind of sit down at home, knock everything out and get it all together to get mixed and mastered. Oh, yeah. It's a great age we live in where there are just so many different things that are so accessible to people now to make it so you can more easily now than ever, like, write and record and produce your own music? Oh, definitely. It's spectacular. And, I mean, because of that, like, you just, overall, you get to become exposed to so many things that you might have never seen before, you know, like, ten, even 10 years ago. Uh, like, their music is just so more accessible for everyone, um, whether it's, like, you know, via, like, stuff you find from podcasts or YouTube videos or just random things that you stumble upon for uh, Spotify. Lots of hidden treasures there. Oh, it's great. Would you say the ability to be like self-producing and self-recording has influenced a lot of what you guys have been able to do as a band? Uh, I would say that it's definitely helped in Fury the, the last couple years, yes. Um, it's been a thing where, I mean, we released the End of an Era Rebirth this year. Uh, the band with a slightly different lineup released Revenant last year. Um, we're already writing new material. Sweet. Uh, so it's being able to do that and us having the know-how to be able to like create a uh, product that sounds like, you know, finessed and, and professional um, really helps us kind of like get a leg up and just work at the pace that we want to work at. We don't have to work around anyone's schedule but our own. That's a wonderful thing. When you're getting ready to get into the studio mm -hmm. and start recording and start writing, as somebody that's a vocalist for a band that's like very technical and very musically advanced, it's kind of all over the spectrum of things. How do you approach that as a writer to kind of glue it together? So as far as writing goes, um, I've not recorded anything original that I've written with Inferi yet. Um, however, uh, my band Equipoise released um, an album uh, earlier this year as well. Uh, Similar type of music, very technical, um, lots of different moving elements. Uh, for stuff like that, honestly, I kind of just, um, I prefer to have uh, at least a rough idea of what the song is from beginning yeah. to end. That way I can, uh, I just listen to it time and time again. And usually I'll hear just like a, a, a tertiary melody that's not there. And um, typically I'll go through and I will write all of my vocal patterns, and then after that, I'll find the right words and phrases to fill them in uh, as far as the content goes. I just find that a lot of times when I write the other way around, I end up sacrificing 
proper patterns and like the right kinds of buildups for phrases that I like I don't want to get rid of because I've become attached to them. Oh yeah. And that ability to kind of write that way where you can feel the rise and fall of the music like that and understand the different choices that you can make. Is that something you've always inherently had or did you go out and learn that? Because I feel like there are a lot of people out there that have the drive mm-hmm. to start doing this stuff vocally and get into bands, but they don't necessarily have the know-how musically about how they fit into the puzzle or the kind of choices that they can make and how they can be doing something totally different from the music and yet have it be totally uh, cohesive. Yeah. So where does that come from for you, that skill? Uh, I feel like it's probably a little bit of nature and a little bit of nurture. Um, Hmm. So originally, like when I like kind of started learning how to do vocals and was getting the mindset of like, cool, I want to join a band. I want to do this in like a live setting and I want to work with some other people uh, and get, you know, these ideas out of my head. Um, I definitely had uh, a number of of different ideas and just sort of kind of um, it's com- it's 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 almost intuitive. Uh, I feel like it's kind of pretentious to just like totally be like, oh yeah, it's all just up there. Um, Natural born talent. There, there's like a little bit of it. It is that is there, but uh, I would say that I really help myself by just kind of dissecting things that I like about other bands and taking the time to like sit down and like learn the lyrics and think about more than just what the words were like think about yeah. how it structures into the song and like how it helps things crescendo or you know why a certain beat fits better for like really like amping something up and making it high energy than another one um so i feel like uh you know i think it's something that really anyone can learn you just got to you know, sit down and pick things apart and figure out how to put them back together again. Yeah, And studying other kinds of music, like you said, is such an inherently important thing to do and just listen to as many different kinds of things as you can. Mm -hmm. Like when you're like left to your own devices, what kind of stuff would you say you're listening to? Uh, What are you listening to right now? Right now, uh, Childish Gambino is probably the number. I listen to (laughs) Camp like every day and then like a bunch of other songs. Uh, The new Logic album is super awesome. Um, That I've been meaning to check out. Yeah, he's he's crazy talented. Uh, his new record is super sick and it's very relatable like in the common era there's like uh there's a lot of different um seems uh, themes about like social media and stuff like that on there that are are very prevalent uh other than that i've been jamming uh the new war forged album a whole lot voice Sweet. is really sick um it's kind of been like mostly that uh, a lot of arsis i love arsis james malone is oh, yeah. an incredible lyricist i love his like dark poetic phrasing for things and then he's a spectacular guitar player so uh yeah that's probably like the four biggest things on my rotation right now that's awesome it's a powerful list kind of along those kinds of lines of thinking when you are in a more technical band it's very easy for a lot of what gets seen at the surface to be a lot about the instrumental and like about the complications of things uh instrumentally Mm -hmm. for you it it seems like you are really invested in things lyrically and about like the content of what's being said uh where does that come from for you where when you're getting ready to write and record like where does that come from for you the Uh, uh the depth of what you're writing so for me honestly like a really big thing uh, that I feel like helped me out a lot was when I was a kid, I just wanted to be a writer. Um, okay. I, I don't read nearly as much as I used to, but I used to be like a very voracious reader. Like I I didn't have a whole lot of friends growing up. I moved a lot. And so I spent a lot of time just like playing Pokemon and reading books. That, those, were like, <laughs> those were like my two big things. And yep. then I got into like writing poetry and stuff like that. So um, I feel like that has like really helped the lyrical process for me. Um, and it's something, you know, something that I also really enjoy and I really enjoy writing lyrics and like being able to sit down and read them with no music and enjoy what's there. That's a very big thing for me. So whenever I sit down to write, I try to write something that I would enjoy alongside the music as well as I would, you know, enjoy on its own. Of course. And that's, it's so, uh, crucial, like how important it is that so many different styles of writing can all come together to make sense in one thing because it's just lots of different pieces of who you are when it's like how you create yeah totally and speaking of that just because i very firmly believe that nobody is just one thing Mm -hmm. with like i said the all of the different uh updates in technology and all of like the marvels of that how so many people can do so much more now it's very modern for people to be in more than one band now. Oh yeah. I just wanted you to talk about your bands a little bit and what it's like kind of balancing your life and your creativity <laughs> and your time between so many different things because it is a pretty 
prevalent uh, both fact and then sometimes issue that a lot of people deal with where they are getting into a lot of projects mm -hmm. and aren't sure how to actually handle that? So the easiest thing, so uh, as far as like my current lineup goes, uh, I do vocals for Inferi. Um, we are actively touring and, um, you know, trying to just get out and play as many shows as possible and like get on bigger, bigger tours and stuff. Uh, I'm in another band called Equipoise, uh, who is just now getting into the touring game. We'll have our first one with Beyond Creation, Fallujah and Archaic here in, uh, in just a couple months. Sweet. Um, I'm also in a band back home called Tethys, uh, and we are actively writing, um, playing shows. Uh, Tethys has toured before in the past, and Ash and Horde is uh, the other project that I'm in. It's more of like a black metal kind of vibe. Um, and as of now, like uh, we just write and record music. Um, Ash and Horde doesn't really tour. Um, so the way that I typically divide my calendar up sort of just depends on uh, who has something coming up either like actively writing or recording um, or playing shows. And I sort of go through and prioritize those things. Uh, I actually have a calendar in my room because um, ancient. Yeah. Uh, like and the big paper yeah. calendar. Yeah, yeah, like that's the... got like all the days and the numbers <laughs> and everything. Uh, it's a Pokemon calendar, so you know, I got, got some cute to yeah. look at. Um, and uh, typically I'll go through and around my work schedule, um, I kind of carve out certain days to work on projects. Uh, for me anyways, that gives me a chance to make sure that I'm actively keeping up on top of my workload, uh, that I'm staying on top of writing. Um, three of my bands released albums this year. Uh, Busy. You know, yeah, Dim <laughs> Equipoise dropped Demiurgis, uh, Ash and Horde released Fallen Cathedrals, and In Fury dropped The End of an Era Rebirth. That's how to get it done. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tethys is also working on new material, so I'm making time for that. But I, I sit down with a calendar and I create very um, like clear dates as to when I need to have things done, which days I'm going to dedicate on working on certain projects. And the nice thing about that is if I start to feel stuck somewhere, yeah. it it kind of helps me to like venture into one of the others because all of these bands are a bit different from each other. And you know, if, if I get stuck in one area, um, I can usually get over that hurdle by diving into something else. All right. Two questions then about that. What do you think is, has been the most beneficial thing for your life in terms of being able to be in so many projects? And what's one of the more annoying things about that? <laughs> um, oh man. Uh, I guess, in my head, like the best part about it is just like being able to work with so many awesome people and yeah, like release it's pretty music. Rad. Yeah, like this is easily musically this has been the most productive year of my life. Like three albums have been finished. Uh, I've great. got another thing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Another thing that's been um, tracked and sent off to be released later this year. Uh, and you know, as a result of that, like getting to go on tour and stuff, which is spectacular. Um, the biggest annoyance that I would say, honestly, for me is recording. <laughs> I just, I, it it's a is, lot of recording. Yeah. No, a lot I mean, of hours. yeah, exactly. And it's it, recording vocals. Isn't like this crazy, awesome process. It's no, nowhere near as fun as playing shows. It oftentimes results in me just in, uh, so I have, um, I have a walk-in closet and I have like put like sound foam up and stuff like that. Oh, so you convert that it into a vocal booth. Exactly. I've got an extra monitor in there, a wireless trackpad and keyboard. And so I record stuff by myself. So it's literally just me standing in my closet, screaming at the wall. For like hours on end. Yeah, yeah. Un <laughs> until I feel like it sounds good enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that was another question I was going to ask you. Being in so many projects, that means you get that many more opportunities to go into like either the studio or other people's spaces to record vocals. Yeah. Do you have a specific method for like how you kind of approach that both physically and mentally when you know like there's about to be a busy period where you're recording a lot? Like how you handle yourself both uh, physically and mm -hmm. mentally? Um, so as far as the physical aspect goes, uh, I try to do more cardio um, beforehand yeah. just because it just it opens your lungs up. It makes it that much easier to breathe. Um, and then also I feel like it kind of helps with the endurance aspect because big time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, mentally, usually for me, it just kind of is uh, a lot of, um, just making sure that I'm like doing proper warm up exercises and stuff like that. And then going over the songs so that I can make sure that I'm not like wasting a bunch of takes because of, like I get three fourths of the way through a, a something and I'm like, ah, I totally blanked on the word or the yeah. pattern or like what comes next. 
So um, yeah, just a lot of uh, reviewing things and uh, different types of like vocal stretches and stuff. Just an all-encompassing be prepared, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is a very important thing to do and it's very easy for people to kind of forget those things mm -hmm. just because they're very excited to go in or they just don't know a lot about a lot of those things. Yeah. I, I agree with you entirely. Or I feel like a lot of people, like you said, they get excited yeah. that, that um, you know, the. Being able to have the physical, tangible thing becomes yeah. within their grasp, so they're just like, oh man, I need to rush, I need to get this done. Um, whereas, you know, it's, it's important to remember that, like, as much as you want to meet those deadlines, and as yeah. much as you want to make those things happen, and, like, hold that album in your hands, like, you just want to make sure that at the end of the day, like, you're happy with what you have, and, yeah. like, you're happy with yourself, so. And then uh, also, like, quality over quantity, or Most quality definitely. over just, like, being rushed, yeah. and just having something now. Yeah, I agree entirely. Big time. So the last thing I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. is a little little on the sillier side yeah. in terms of just like being somebody that's in a more musically advanced kind of group. What would you say is the most kind of very stripped down, very kind of uh, gross, like awful kind of thing you could listen to and why is it Wormhole? Oh my gosh, dude, it's so funny that like, you were, I, like, that's literally what I was thinking of in my head. I was like, man, that new Wormhole album, so I got to listen to it with, my favorite people. <laughs> yeah, I got to listen to it with, uh, with those dudes on the last tour yeah. and like, damn. <laughs> yeah, Wormhole is, yeah, they have some cool things coming. It is the most delightful incarnation of slam I have ever heard <laughs> while simultaneously just being utterly disgusting. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can 100% agree with that. But that's all we've got for you today. This is Stevie with Inferi, and I'm David from Extreme Vocal Institute, and we'll see you next time. Oh, man. Hell you, like, yeah. literally read my mind with, like, with Wormhole. Like, <laughs> as you were talking, when you were, like, to, like, discussing, I was like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what this is. It's Wormhole. Like, I just watched the stars align and just Wormhole. <laughs>